So I'd like to kick off by hearing from our panelists. So if I could start with you, Vahe, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Vahe Asadadian, and I'm a master's student at the London School of Economics now, uh, reading international uh, social and public policy. I've lived in London for the last four years, but I'm originally from Prague, the Czech Republic. I was born and raised there. And uh, my uh, family are originally from Armenia, so I'm first generation diasporan. Uh, but uh, my ancestors came from Western Armenia, from Van, uh, Mush and Gars. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, discussing today what Armenianness means for all of us, considering the globalized world that we live in. Naomi, do you want to go next? Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Noemi Stefan Sarkissian. Um, I am a third generation diasporan. Uh, I was born in Cambridge, but have lived um, for all of my life in northwest London. Both my parents were born in Tabriz, um, and except for my mother's maternal grandmother and my father's maternal grandparents who survived the genocide and were from Van, the rest of my um, family were from northwestern Iran in the province of Azerbaijan. Thank you. Uh, Nush, do you want to go next? Hello, everyone. <laughs> so lovely to speak to you all today. Um, so I... Uh, I was born in London and so are my parents, um, but my background, especially because I'm redhead, a lot of you are probably like, what, no, she's Irish or something, but no, I am fully Armenian. <laughs> uh, and my background actually comes from Ezrum and Adana from Turkey, and from there my family fled to Lebanon and Cyprus, but mainly Cyprus, and from there my grandparents came here to London, and I'm really looking forward to having this discussion with you guys because... I mean, it is definitely confusing being an Armenian in London from Lebanon and Cyprus. Hofseb. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, my name is Hofseb Markaryan. Uh, I'm a master's student in cultural studies at SOAS University of London. I'm currently working on my master's thesis um, from Yerevan, Armenia, where I currently live. Uh, so I was born and raised in Aleppo, Syria, but I've also lived and studied in Lebanon, Beirut, and London. Um, and uh, I'm also a fourth generation Armenian with my ancestors coming from different parts of the Ottoman Empire. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to this discussion. Thank you. I think let's kick off with the title of our event. So what is Armenianness? Tell us about um, your home. Where is home? Um, I'll kick off with Nush. Tell us uh, if you if you start off. Oh, honestly, guys, <laughs> I've always this is the biggest thing for me. Like whenever my friends ask me where I am from, it's always a mystery to to them when I start explaining it to them because you know I'm originally I guess from Turkey, but that doesn't exist. Armenia is not Turkey anymore, so I have to explain to them about the genocide if they don't know about the genocide. And then I, I mean, all my friends know I go to Cyprus every year because both of my parents, or grandparents grew up there. Um, so, I mean, I, this is the thing, like for me, home is just not one place. It, it just isn't and it can't be because <laughs> well, I feel like I, whenever I go back to Lebanon, even I feel the sense of wealth, like I'm so welcome there and I feel at home in Lebanon as well as Cyprus. So, and here, so it's such a weird one for me and <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm sure most of you probably are feeling the exact same. Well, <laughs> let's go to someone who's a bit less confused then. Why don't, Vahe, why don't you tell us what Armenianness means to you? Where is home for you? I, I think the older I get, I think I realise that Armenianness, as it were, is an increasingly diverse and uh, intertwined uh, concept of identity. I think as Armenians, we're a global nation and we found ourselves in continents across the world. For me personally, I think I would say home is Prague for me. Home is the Czech Republic. And whenever I think of home, I think of Bedrich Smetana, the Czech composer's uh, My Homeland composition. Um, at the same time, uh, because my ancestors were obviously from Armenia and my parents are from Hayastan, they're Hayastansis, um, I consider Armenia to be my motherland at the same time. So it's, it's almost like I'm 100% Armenian and 100% a Czech citizen. So yeah, it's, it's the duality or 
triality uh, or wherever you are from um, and the, Ar the Armenian experience of it, really. And Naomi, what about you? Um, I think I'm very similar to Nush in that I feel very confused. Um, I wouldn't identify any single country as home necessarily. Um, obviously, I've grown up in Britain all my life, but um, there are so many cultural differences between my culture and the British culture, which makes it difficult for me to fully identify Britain as home. Um, and then in other aspects, I know that the British culture has influenced my upbringing and um, the way that I think. Um, so that's sort of the British side. Um, in terms of Armenia, I'm considering Armenia home. Um, my ancestors are not from Armenia. They're from Iran and from technically Turkey. Bond. So um, when I visit Armenia, I would say that I, I do feel at home in some aspects, but not in others. And in terms of Iran, I've never visited, so I can't really speak of how I would feel and whether that would make me feel more at home, um, whether seeing the Iranian Armenian community there would make me feel at home. I'm not sure. Okay. Hafsa, what about you? My answer is unfortunately not going to be any less complicated than the other panelists. Uh, home is a really di like difficult and complex concept in reality. And uh, although I was born and raised in Aleppo, Syria, and was there for until 17 years until the start of the war, uh, I lived in a bubble, so in an Armenian bubble with the schools and societies and friends and family and the church and etc. cetera. It, um, it felt like living in a small sort of homeland within another sort of country. So, and then moving to Armenia, that felt a little bit like home because we grew up with that concept, but then it didn't really match the reality that I had in mind because a lot of it was sort of mythical, whatever we were taught at school and um, through songs and uh, literature and etc. So again, I would say, I, I wouldn't really say I have a fixed home. Um, Armenia probably feels the closest to, to home, but it's not quite. So I'm probably more of a nomad with <laughs> no fixed home than any other thing. So, I mean, this is quite interesting because it, it, it leads me to another question, which I would, uh, I was going to sort of ask you guys, you know, when you're, when you're talking to people, where do you say you're from and, and how would you answer? Uh, Nomi, you mentioned this, you know, you alluded to this somewhat, um, but I mean, to give you guys an example, when I, when I'm sort of speaking to people, I always, I mean, I guess it depends on your audience, but I always say Armenian, um, but I'll clarify that I'm British, um, but grew up in Cyprus. Um, I feel a little bit less confused than the rest of you. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> um, because Cyprus for me is home in many ways, and so is England. Hobbs, leading on to what you were saying, so if someone was to ask you now, where are you from? Would you just say I'm Syrian Armenian? No, I say it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on whoever is asking as well. If I feel like the person uh, is interested, I would go on to explain, but uh, sometimes just to avoid any confusion if I don't have enough time I would just say Syria because that is where I was born and raised so um, it again depends on who's asking and what kind of answers they're looking for. What about you Nush? Background wise I'm like you Tatiana in some ways I would say that I normally do say that I am Armenian because that is my blood but like it I would never, I would also say I'm, I'm, I normally say I'm Cypriot Armenian more than I'm like Lebanese Armenian because that is, I guess, where my grandparents grew up. So I'm more like going to tell my, my English friends that as well, because it's, it's, I don't know, it's one of those things like I, when I start explaining it to my friends, they just look at me like I'm a crazy person, especially when I'm talking about the genocide and what had happened, because it is a lot to take in, <laughs> especially if you just get asked by a complete stranger, like it's just such an, it is complicated. So I also like Hofsep, like just say, it's quite complicated, but I'm Armenian by blood, Cypriot Armenian. And I, I go to Cyprus all the time. That is like my homeland as well. So it's such a hard thing for me to explain to my friends. And I normally just say I'm Armenian or Cypriot Armenian. And I kind of just leave it as that. Well. And Vahe, was it easier for you? I mean, how big was the, um, growing up in the Czech Republic at school, were there a lot of different minorities in your school? Was it easier to sort of just say I'm Armenian? I 
moved around a lot of sort of international English-speaking schools and the Czech public school. So I think I very much grew to quickly understand that I, I basically always introduce myself as Czech Armenian and usually follow that up with I was born in Prague but to an Armenian family or to Armenian parents. Um, so in that sense I think it provides more certainty to, uh, to whoever is speaking with me but it also I guess depends on who's asking. Um, if I'm around Armenians, obviously, I, I, I say I'm, I, I'm Armenian, or if they ask which diaspora community I'm from, uh, that then sparks another com conversation. I've had interesting people say, oh, you know, I've never heard of that combination before, um, which, <laughs> which is also quite funny because growing up in the Armenian community here, it's almost normal for us um, to, to, to have that combination. I would say I'm Czech Armenian. Naomi, what about you? Is it much easier for you to sort of just explain I'm Iranian Armenian? I find it difficult. I, if I'm speaking to a non-Armenian, the first response is just simply Armenian. Um, I don't really delve into the Iranian Armenian aspect because I already find explaining that even though I was born in Britain, I'm blood kind of Armenian is difficult for a lot of people to understand so if I bring in another element of oh my parents actually weren't born in Armenia they were born in Tabriz in Iran then that just makes it 10 times more confusing so um, I just simply identify as British Armenian if I was obviously speaking to um, an Armenian or even I guess um, someone who lives who's from Iran I would kind of delve into my heritage and where my parents are from and where my grandparents are from but um, I think simply for a British person or anyone else, I, I think Armenian is, is what, what it is usually. I think that's, um, you know, that, that's, it's really interesting to hear all of you say, you know, all of you sort of coming in with these different perspectives, because I do think it does make a difference who you're speaking to. And I mean, in my experience for many years, I would say to people, I'm Armenian and people would say, what is that? Um, and, I, and I have to admit, it wasn't until sort of, um, Kim Kardashian's fame that people started really acknowledging what an Armenian was in that mainstream way. Um, prior to that, you'd have to really, you'd have to sit and even explain what an Armenian was or where Armenia is or, and then get into the whole genocide discussion because like you all, I, um, my family's from the gen, well, one side of my family's from the genocide. So I, I do feel you all. You all come from such sort of diverse backgrounds in terms of your upbringings um, and your family sort of history. What is a diasporan to each of you? And what do you think that, and how do you think that term has changed um, in sort of today? Um, how do sort of diasporan Armenians view each other? I mean, you've all sort of mentioned this a little bit where when you're speaking to an Armenian, you clarify your Armenian background. Um, so I, I'd want to, I want to kind of move into this area a little bit and understand that, that element of, of the, um, of the jigsaw puzzle. So I'll, um, I'll go back to you, Naomi, if you want to sort of maybe tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this. Um, so I think um, a diasporan, I would say, is anyone who doesn't live in their home country, but still retains aspects of its culture, be that language, food, religion. Um, and I think in terms of the Armenian diaspora, I think it changed, it's constantly evolving because um, as Armenians have dispersed all around the world, they've taken in aspects of their host country's kind of culture. And, um, and that's sort of why we now have these distinctions of, of an Iranian Armenian or a Lebanese Armenian or a Cypriot Armenian. We all kind of understand or identify our Armenianness in different ways, um, which I think is um, really interesting. And um, I think it'll be interesting to see kind of 20, 30 years down the line, what a diaspora in Armenia will look like then um, compared to now. Maya, what about you? It's a very interesting question because um, growing up in Prague, I feel that uh, because the Czech Armenian community is quite young, unlike the, the Lebanese, the Syrian, the uh, Iranian communities, which, you know, you could consider to be traditional sort of hubs of Armenian communities for, for, for many decades, uh, if not uh, centuries now. Um, the Czech Armenian community has mostly been formed in the 1990s since the collapse of the Soviet Union and socioeconomic and political migration to the country. So I grew up with the sense that, you know, D diaspora very much does uh, relate to 
to, to, to Armenia itself, the country today. But then obviously traveling to London and studying in London and meeting diaspora and, diaspora and Armenians from so many different continents, you grow to realize that the idea of diaspora and the idea of what it means to be a diaspora in Armenian is such a varied and beautiful um, a beautiful uh, concept of identity. I mean, you've got Western Armenians and Eastern Armenians, and you've got uh, like in I, the community I grew up in, we didn't have any sorts of political uh, inclinations. And then I moved to the UK, and you realize you've got the, the Dashnaks and the Hunchaks and the Ramkavars, and then you've got all the different churches and something that I personally didn't experience. So seeing that diversity from community to community is really. Uh, the representation of of diaspora for me. I just I'm I hope one day that we can uh, you know especially the younger generation can look beyond these differences, and and really um, look at more of our similarities than the differences, and realize that a diasporan doesn't necessarily have to be Western Armenian speaking, and a Hayastanti doesn't need to necessarily be Eastern Armenian speaking. So we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Just coming of the old, as Sam Cook used to say. Um, Hobsep, tell us from your experience, and especially I'm quite curious because obviously you grew up in um, in Syria, and I think in many ways the the heritage um, and the history kind of lives through the generations. And and to Vaya's point about the, the sort of political affiliations, which is something that plagues our community. Um, so t- tell us a little bit more from your perspective. Right. Um, so in, when it comes to Syria, as you said, there is that heritage and um, there are all these different uh, diaspora organizations and, and things. I personally haven't been involved because um, probably my views are a bit different from sort of the general uh, particular views of our community. But uh, that is really important to sort of take in and uh, sort of negotiate as, we, as I move forward. Uh, but then again, I, I think of uh, the concept of being diaspora and to have sort of a country that you can have a direct link to, but when it comes to us, uh, diaspora and Armenians, we, especially those who, who come from the genocide, uh, generation of genocide survivors, we don't really have that sort of homeland uh, direct link to so it's gone from the Ottoman Empire but then there's Armenia and that is a different relation because our connection with it can be fictional if we haven't visited or lived in Armenia Uh, and that's an experience that I had it was kind of a culture shock when I moved to Armenia to see that it's very different from what I had in mind so uh, because we I'm not from there Uh, but but that is the sort of when it comes to diaspora city, that is the link that I have. It's, it's Armenia, it's nothing else. Uh, but it's a constant negotiation, I think. Um, uh, I always think about it, and recently with the war coming out, out of Syria, uh, and that is the, sort of the country I was born in, and does that make me a diaspora, a diaspora of Syria as well, as well as Armenia? It's, it's complex. Uh, I keep thinking of these questions. So. Nush, what about you? What, 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 what's your, what do you, what do you think? I mean, I think it keeps everything really exciting, personally. I mean, think of all the different cuisines and different cultures we can experience within our own culture. Like, not many races or, I mean, like any country could, like, say that. There's not that many people that have a diaspora like the Armenians. And I think it just, yeah, it keeps it really, like, fun for us. And if, we, if we've got an open mind about it, I think that's the where we need to, you know, go from because I, I, you know, like how Hovsep said, like going to Armenia for some of us, it's been a bit of a culture shock because it isn't, you know, what we expected. But it, at the same time, like you've got to think about it. It's still Armenian. It's just a different type of Armenian, and I really like experiencing the difference, especially like Iranian Armenian. Like it, it's all so exciting to me. So yeah, I think I think we saw that last Saturday when we had our manta event and um we couldn't even agree on how we what we all call it manti manta um the meat that we even use for it so yeah but, i mean it, it's um you all raise a good point i mean there is obviously there there is obviously this perception um of diasporans um being 
you know, those whose families survived the genocide. I think some of you have talked a little bit about this. Vahe, you mentioned this, that, you know, anyone in, um, is a diaspora, and, um, in, including the sort of economic migrants. And, you know, I, I don't know whether anybody wants to add anything to this before we sort of move on to, um, to talking about some of our commonalities um, rather than our differences. No? Okay. Well, then let's move on. Um, let's talk about, rather than talk about our differences, um, what, are, what are the common threads that connect us as Armenians? Um, is it culture? Is it religion? Is it the genocide? Um, what, what are the things that, you know, today as young Armenians, you find um, sort of helps you relate to others? I'll maybe start with you, Nush. Um, I mean... It's always food with me. But uh, like, yeah, like food is a big one. Of course, we all can go to an Armenian, or we've all been to an Armenian party, I'm sure, and experienced the food there. But you know what? It re I relate to a lot of other cultures because of being a diaspora, I'm like Armenian diaspora and girl. Like I feel like, you know, that helps me when it comes to relating to other cultures, especially growing up in London with so many different, cultures around and it's a it, it just you know I felt like in school I was relating to all the like girls that were from like the Middle East and also India because of like the way we come together with food and music and parties and Greeks as well like and I I think that yeah no it's it's one of the you know coolest things about being you know, from somewhere that ex like we express in our food. And I don't know, I think it's one of the best things about being homie. <laughs> one of, there's many qualities that make us amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, what about, what about the rest of you? Um, Hofstad, what, what sort of, what are the commonalities? What are the common threads that connect us? Um, yeah, I'm just going to agree with Nush that I think there was something with my experience in London as well. Like, um, as people, especially coming from the global south, there's this connection that you have instantly, whether it's um, just the way we communicate or we show emotions even, and obviously cuisine and music and things like that. It's really, it's, it's out there. You could feel it. Uh, but uh, I think personally, religion uh, is, is not that much of a strong connector because I'm personally not religious and I think more and more young people aren't these days. Uh, but obviously I understand the, the role of that and the importance of that for our identity. And then there's the genocide which we discussed and I think it's not everyone's experience. So um, again, uh, it's, it's, it's not a, that strong connector for everybody. But then I guess there's a culture obviously and history we, we can't, like deny the fact that we all have a shared history, which uh, every Armenian would know whether they're connected to, to the culture or not. It, it's something that would sort of bring people together, I think. Okay. What about you, uh, Naomi? What do you think? Um, I think um, I agree with what's been said. I think um, kind of how we, um, how we, celebrate um, and we have this kind of sense of warmth um, in our families and our communities um, and also the food and I think dance as well so traditional Armenian dancing I think um, obviously any wedding or Armenian event that you go to we've got that traditional Armenian dance that goes on whether that's in the form of a short bar or it's just freestyle um, I also think that the genocide even though um, not every kind of diaspora and is a genocide or an ancestor of a genocide survivor, I think a determination to educate others on the genocide um, and to raise awareness is a common thread amongst, I'd say, most Armenians that I've met. Um, I also think religion is an interesting one because um, I agree that not everyone um, is religious anymore and a lot of Armenians are no longer, would no longer identify themselves as, you know, religious. I think um, growing up, for me at least, um, the Armenian Apostolic Church in London was kind of a community um, and kind of going there for Easter or Christmas and meeting all the other Armenians in the community was something that I really enjoyed, um, even if I didn't go every Sunday and I didn't, you know, follow everything strictly. Um, I think that kind of connects Armenians around the diaspora is the church because we have our own church, which is unlike any other kind of denomination of Christianity so um yeah 
What about you, Vaya? Make it controversial. <laughs> um, I think my friends have summed it up perfectly. Um, uh, I generally, I think the pillars, as it were, of uh, Armenianness, I've I've found to have been uh, our religion, uh, the genocide, and the language, um, mm. and and people can have varying affiliations with those three pillars. So they're not necessarily, um, you know, you don't have to have 100% of either or to necessarily be a part of the Armenian community, as it were. Um, and I think just to maybe add a final point to this before we, we move on to the next question, I think the point on religion is an interesting one, because even though I myself know a lot of young Armenians as well, who might not necessarily be religious, I haven't met many Armenians, if any, um, that have objected to the idea of, of a church or have necessarily disrespected the church as an, as, uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as an important historical and sociocultural aspect of our identity. So I, I know friends uh, who may not necessarily be religious, but they have wholehearted respect um, for the importance it has played in our history and, and our identity. Um, so I think it's an interesting one, and I, and I think other cultures perhaps don't experience the church or, or religion in the same way um, as we do. But, uh, but yeah, I think those pillars are, are, are definitely um, part, of, part of our identity. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's, um, it, it's an interesting point that you raised, because obviously we, are, um, we were the first sort of people to adopt Christianity, so it's very much sort of part and parcel of, of who we are, um, even if many of us um, or some of us may not follow religion. Um, I guess then my, my next question kind of leads on to, well, what about people who are half Armenian, a quarter Armenian, you know, with, with other multiple layers of different um, backgrounds? How would you... Um, you know, what would you say to them who, and, and how would you sort of help them navigate learning about um, their family, this side of their family history? I mean, because, you know, one of the, um, one of the challenges is, you know, how do you make someone feel not just as a voyeur, but as, as part of that community? Do you feel that there is, there is this sort of challenge within the Armenian um, community that we are not so wholly receptive to quarter Armenians, half Armenians, or, or do you feel that we are? And I'd like to sort of hear a little bit about what you would sort of, how you would sort of engage and how you would try and, um, you know, help people feel more included. Um, Nush, I, I, I'm going to go to you on this because I know that you've also got your, um, your YouTube video where you sort of cover off um, Eurovision um, okay. every year, <laughs> barring this year. But I, I just want to kind of understand, yeah, how do you, how do, you do that? And, and, I, and I suppose as, as an entertainer somewhat, you, you're, you kind <laughs> oh. of... Maybe. Yeah, I get a lot of Armenians that like, accuse me of not being Armenian to, or not being enough Armenian, I guess. But I mean, I've had to, I feel like I have had to prove, even though I am pretty much 100% Armenian, uh, that I am really Armenian. And it, I can feel for, like my boyfriend's half Armenian and he's in America. So like he has to deal with, you know, having to kind of make up for the fact that he's only half. But I, I don't think it's necessarily a pressure sometimes. I think it's more we feel individually that we have to prove it most of the time because of what our culture, you know, what we went through and our people went through. We don't want to lose that. And I think we've had that ingrained into our system in a good way. I think it's amazing to do what we're doing. And I think that that's maybe the reason why we feel like we kind of have to prove that we're Armenian if we don't look a set or if we're half, because we just want to show our ancestors that, you know, we're really Armenian. But I think, yeah, I don't think necessarily I get too much pressure in that sense because I'm, I know I'm Armenian, I'm Armenian and I'm really proud of my background and I don't really, it doesn't bother me as much, but I'm sure it does bother some other people because, you know, it depends on the kind of person that you are, I guess. Naomi, what about you? It's really important for kind of as diasporans to be welcoming of mixed Armenians and be willing to um, not only educate them if, if they're interested in the Armenian culture and heritage, but also to understand the other half of their heritage. 
um, because as a race who have, you know, been um, through genocide and we've been um, persecuted for our race, I think it's really important to appreciate other um, groups and other ethnicities um, and kind of widen our understanding of them. I also think um, there's a lot of pressure on mixed Armenians to prove their Armenianness through language and through the ability to speak Armenian. And I think this is quite limiting because obviously speaking a language is only one part of the Armenian culture and somebody can be an Armenian and kind of um, understand their heritage and be or immerse themselves in the heritage but not speak the language. Um, so I think me personally, I really enjoy speaking to people who come from mixed Armenian backgrounds and just understanding um, how their parents, for example, met, um, why their parents were in the countries that they were, um, and sort of, um, yeah, I think I think it's a, it's, um, especially in today's society, it's really important for us to to be more accepting of of other cultures. Bahir, what about what about you? Um, yeah, I say I say to any Armenian, in whole or in part, you're welcome. Um, I I I think I I, I loathe uh, division and unnecessary and arbitrary designations of who's in and who's out, effectively. And um, I've met I'll put it this way I've met Armenians who are whole Armenian, and give off less Armenianness than people who may be a quarter Armenian or a half Armenian or those who have just recently discovered that they've got Armenian roots and feel that they need to learn the language, learn about the culture. So I don't think there are any <laughs> clean cut purist lines on, on what it means to be an Armenian. I think if you're a proactive carrier of that identity, that's what's um, most important. And, and uh, yeah, uh, basically, you're half Armenian or you're fully Armenian, you're still Armenian. And, and if you want to be a part of the community, you should be welcomed and uh, need to do everything to break down those barriers and effectively foster a sense of uh, unity for, for, for our common purposes. You know, I think that, um, thank you for saying that, because I think, I think you've all sort of reasoning that um, that's quite interesting. It, it's, it seems to me as though the younger generation is, is far more open and as we live in this globalized world, our views have changed um, quite a bit. And then, you know, there are, because there are some people and you will still encounter this who, who do sort of differentiate a half Armenian, for example, and what that ends up, you know, how that ends up affecting a young Armenian growing up in the community it, sometimes it leads to complete disassociation or sometimes it leads to, as Nush said, them trying 100% more than every other Armenian. And sometimes they end up being a better, a better Armenian, for want of a better word, <laughs> than, you know, the, the, the Armenian that grew up in the very Armenian home. And actually, also, our culture can be somewhat suffocating, at the, you know, because <laughs> it is drilled into you. Um, you know, this is our history. This is our culture. And you know, when you're growing up in these sort of different countries where you're, um, you're also dealing with learning and wanting to sort of integrate within the uh, community that you live in, you know, but you've also got to hold the, um, the, the sort of um, the history of your, own, of your own culture as well. So, um, I, yeah, thank you guys. That, that's really interesting. And I'm, and I'm glad to hear that. I don't know whether you would have anything to say, Vahe, maybe you um, would have, what would you say to someone who, you know, wasn't, um, wasn't so accepting of, of Armenians, would you, of, of mixed backgrounds, what would you say to them? In general, I think it's an insular form of thinking. Um, it's very close minded. And if anything, it just encourages division and, un and unnecessary inter-community hate. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I've seen this carry through from the older generations into the younger generations. And, and I'm hoping that through time, and especially, I mean, uh, Hofsep and I know, especially from some of our uh, Armenian society work in, in, the, in, in the universities in London, um, 
how beautiful and truly wholesome and heartwarming it's been bringing together these Armenians of so many backgrounds. You know, you've got half Austrian, half Armenian, grew up in Vienna, but speaks perfect Armenian. You know, uh, you know, grew up in Russia, but then migrated somewhere else. And then, you know, is somehow a quarter Armenian, but still feels like that's their dominant identity. So, um, yeah, no, I just reject hate, um, reject division, and, and, and genuinely, uh, you know, understand that, uh, we're we're few. <laughs> we don't number a lot in the world, and and it's and it's and it's in our interest to come together. Thank you for that, Brian. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Armenia then. Um, does making you go to Armenia? Does making you go to Armenia make you more Armenian today? Um, and. More importantly, have you all been to Armenia? I'll have I know you have been, so you don't have to answer that question. Um, and did you feel at home or as a guest? So, Nami, I'll, I'll start off with you. Um, does making you go to Armenia make you Armenian? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say so. I think um, I personally, as an Armenian, always wanted to go just to see the history and everything that I'd learned about all my life just to see that in in real time um, but I don't necessarily think you have to visit Armenia to prove your Armenianness, as it were um, because in the diaspora the Armenian communities um, a lot of them are so rich in their kind of um, how do I put this um, kind of carrying over the culture and making sure that the people in that diaspora understand their kind of culture and heritage. Um, I think going to Armenia is an addition to that um, and it can help people kind of understand it further. Um, in terms of visiting Armenia, I've been um, three times, I believe. And um, I would say it feels both like I'm going home, but in other ways it doesn't because everyone around me is obviously speaking Armenian, which is the only place in the world, I believe that I would be able to be in a, in a place where everyone around me speaks the language, the store names are all in Armenian and, and everything like that. Um, and obviously seeing these um, historic landmarks that I'd always learnt about um, was, was quite um, eye-opening for me. But in other ways, I felt that a lot of Armenians living in Armenia considered me a tourist and um, felt that I was only there, you know, just to enjoy my summer holiday and that I never really intended to live in Armenia or give back something to the country. Um, I had a lot of discussions with kind of taxi drivers who would ask me, um, why don't you come and live here? Um, and why, why do the youth of today living in the diaspora not come back home? And it's kind of a difficult discussion that you have with trying to explain how different your upbringing has been from those living in Armenia and, and things like that. But yeah, it's, it's a bit of both. I would say I feel at home in some ways, but in other ways, I feel like a tourist just going to visit a beautiful country. Vahe, what about you? I mean, you grew up, um, I mean, your family uh, comes from Armenia somewhat. How does it, uh, does it make you more Armenian today, do you think? Um, I mean, Definitely, I, I think I do have that family connection, so that auto automatically does translate into stronger feelings of ties towards the country. Obviously, having some extended family there, even though most of my family are in the diaspora. Um, but it's interesting you say that because even as an Eastern Armenian speaker, I've been called out in, in, in shops or in public places saying, you're not here from here, are you? Uh, do do I still it's check um, and it's <laughs> um, and it's interesting for for the locals to be able to pick up on that because I I still speak Eastern Armenian but I guess a lot of uh, maybe my Czech upbringing or my Central European upbringing has has an impact I know for example it's a very Czech custom to greet someone 
a stranger in any public environment. So if you were going into a waiting room or if you were waiting uh, to see someone in, on a corridor or wherever, or if you pass someone on the street, then it's sort of a custom to say hi. So I remember go going into a shop and just saying, what is this? And they just looked at me like I'm crazy. Why am I, why am I saying hi to these people? You know, who is this person? Um, <laughs> so, so I think that there are little, little, I think, socio-cultural things that you, you experience growing up that creates that disconnect. But yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting to, to compare our different experiences. Thank you. Hofsep, I'm going to, um, I'm going to put you now and, and, and I'm just going to share an experience that I had my, uh, my second trip to Armenia. Um, I've been to Armenia twice and I went twice within three months of each other. That's how much I liked it. Um, but I remember meeting a Syrian Armenian woman when I was there on my second trip and she had just moved over because of the war. And I said to her, oh, it must be so nice to move to Armenia and so on. And she said to me, no, I miss Syria. I want to go back to Syria. So as someone who is, um, who sort of moved over to Armenia, you know, does it make you more Armenian? Do you feel at home there? Um... Yeah, I do. I do in many ways feel at home. I, I, as I said previously, it's not 100% uh, to, to anywhere, to any kind of belonging. Um, but I think it's the closest that I felt because of my upbringing, sort of growing up in that Armenian bubble um, with my family and friends around me and everything. Um, obviously, there are a lot of differences and uh, there in the cost, culture and custom and language and, and all these things. But uh, I even politi politically feel more uh, sort of at home in Armenia than, than in Syria, for example. And I don't really feel like I want to go back or anything. And what about you, Nish? So I'm going to be honest. The first time I went to Armenia, I, I just didn't feel 100%. I, I, as I said before, I went in with a perception of it. And I think I was let down because I had an idea of what it was going to be like in my head. And I thought it was just going to be like Lebanon, Cyprus with the same food that I'm used to. And I was a bit younger. I was 15. So I, I think I was in the teenager mind. I didn't really, you know, have an open mind. And I, funny enough, after going to Armenia and experiencing it, I now really want to go back. So there was something that I clearly felt home there. I mean, coming into Yerevan on the plane and seeing Ararat was just amazing for me. Like I, I'd never seen, I, you know, you think of this moment your whole life if you've never been to Armenia and I hadn't. So that was the only time I'd been. And I really want to go back now and explore it properly. Like, you know, everything Yerevan properly by myself. Cause I mean, we had a strict tour and I kind of was doing what my family wanted to do, but I'd like to go with friends or, you know, by myself as well and explore it and see it in a different way than what I saw it last time. But I definitely, am, I do feel connected to it now more and more as I grow up because I, it is the only, as Naomi said, like it's the only place in the world that their, their language is Armenian, you know? We don't have that anywhere else and might as well make the most of it. And I think there's a lot in Armenia that is so beautiful and I, I never... I never really realized it until I got to grow up and look back at the pictures and I was like, wow, it's actually really stunning. It's, it, the churches are amazing. There's so much there that, you know, I do definitely love and would love to go see again. So, yeah. It, it, it is indeed. I have to agree. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful country. I remember being awestruck and it strikes me. That, and the reason why I was asking this question is because when I was growing up, and actually, I think this was this was even made a joke of in the film Sideways um, that, you know, to be a real Armenian, you had to have a painting of Mount Ararat somewhere in your house. And in my house, of course, we had, you know, a number of them and a lot of other Armenian things that sort of, you know, make you feel more Armenian. Um, but I do think that the younger generation and especially now as Armenia's opened up um, post-Soviet, it, it, it does become this saying, oh gosh, you've never been to Armenia and people look at you a bit funny if you say that you haven't. Um, which leads me to one of my final questions um, before we open it up to the Q&A. And um, th this one is really about um, 
the sort of notion that's becoming prevalent about, among some Armenians, and I'd love to sort of hear your thoughts on this, um, and it's about whether or not we should return to the motherland, or as some call it, our homeland. And how do you feel about that? Do you feel that um, you can only contribute by move, moving there? Uh, Naomi, you mentioned this a little bit yourself when you, in your discussions with taxi drivers, um, and I can attest that I've had similar discussions. I mean, do you consider, do you consider it repatriating or migrating? I'll, um, I'll start with you, Naomi. Um, I think for me personally, if I was ever to move to Armenia, I would consider it migrating because I'm not technically from today's Armenia. So um, for me, it would be migrating. And I think um, given the recent political changes in Armenia, you know, the Velvet Revolution and the election of Nikol Pashinyan, I think um, this view of Armenia being a realistic place for diasporans to move back to or just to move to um, is becoming more and more kind of widespread. Um, but I also think there are still a lot of cultural differences and um, views that are not maybe as liberal as the ones that I've been used to in Britain that would um, make it difficult for me to, you know, just up and leave everything and move to, to Armenia. Um, and I think um, there are lots of other ways that Armenians in the diaspora can, who are not prepared to make that move can still contribute to Armenia. And that can be through kind of projects like Birthright, um, where you go and spend some time in like a village in Armenia and you can kind of really immerse yourself in that community. Um, you can understand how people live. And um, yeah, so I think it's it's really difficult because when I do have these discussions with people in Armenia, they, they struggle to understand why it's not a simple question of coming back to Armenia because that should be my homeland. Um, but I think um, there are obviously so many differences, um, even as an Iranian Armenian with my you know experience of the Armenian culture is, is very different. And I sometimes in that sense feel like an outsider in Armenia because as soon as I start speaking Armenian, they realize that I'm not a Hayastanti and um, I'm an Iranian Armenian. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's a really difficult kind of question of whether to go back home or is it going back home anyway in the first place what about you Nush? yeah I, I think I pretty much agree with everything Naomi said just now because I agree I think it would be migrating for me because it isn't I'm like this is my I guess I was born here so this is my home so I couldn't say like especially if I go over there to Armenia and I start speaking the way that I do like they, they look at me as if I'm for a foreigner and like, I don't want to feel like that, but it would be migrating in that sense because I wasn't born there. I didn't grow up with the Armenian, Eastern Armenian culture, but doesn't mean that I wouldn't necessarily adapt. I think I would, but yeah, it would be 100% migrating. And I also think you don't need to go there to be, you know, contributing. Like there's so many charities and different programs you can get involved with. I mean, our family got involved with the um, Armenian Tree Project. So we donated loads of um, trees because there was a tree problem in Armenia. Um, and yeah, we donated quite a bit for them. And that was, you know, that there's different ways of doing it. You don't have to go there, in my opinion. But I mean, it's good to go, I think, to see it. But yeah, I don't necessarily think you need to move there. So half step and five, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because you both, um, obviously, um, I think you both shared your views on that. I, I want to talk about a little bit about the contribution and and how we and how we best contribute, because obviously, again, this is something that um, the diasporans, you know, from for many years, especially our parents' generation, um, have you know, done a lot, supported a lot of charities um, over the years. How best do you think that the younger generation can contribute to the, um, the future of Armenia? I'll start with you, Hofsep. I think um, there's a lot of ways that young people or generally diasporans could contribute. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be physically, as my friends were saying, it could be through charity work or just even research. Um, that could do so much for, for the development. But I guess what I would want to stress um, on is 
when it comes to development, I think diasporan students come with a certain view of what the homeland, what Armenia should look like and sort of imp impose that on, on the people and Armenia. I think there should be a cooperation and mutual respect and understanding because there, there are people who have lived here and it's, it's their country and they, they have a certain vision of where they want to go. So I, I'm, I guess that's one thing that I would focus on just to make sure that there's cooperation and understanding and not sort of an imposition of any sort. Okay. What about you, Vaya? Thank you. I think I'm going to second Hofsep uh, on this point um, and add not just the open communication and open dialogue aspect, which I think is very important, um, where uh, higher stances and diasporans and diasporan, diasporans, both Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian diasporans, um, need to find some form of common dialogue with one another and not uh, not not commonly given to uh, unnecessary stereotyping as to as to what their lives abroad or in the or in the republic necessarily look like um, but also uh, uh, I, 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 yeah I, I guess I, I guess the most important factor is communication but also being a proactive carrier of identity if you're if you're someone who's passive in the diaspora um, and you're you're fine with that. Well, don't don't expect a higher stance to then look at it in any other way. And the same applies in reverse. Obviously, I've also spoken to uh, diasporans abroad who feel that Armenians in Armenia aren't Armenian enough. You know, they don't scream Ararat every day, or they don't you know whatever hold an Armenian flag. Um, so I, I think it, I think it goes both ways. Um, <laughs> it's 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 very important to have that channel for communication and thankfully i think i think we're slowly but surely getting there <laughs> thank you so holding the flag makes us more armenian then <laughs> whatever floats your boat <laughs> i need to get i need to get my, that actually i should have swapped my uh, my background for the armenian flag <laughs> um thank you guys for um for sort of talking through some of these things and i and i hope that actually through this discussion it might have helped clear up some of those um, identity questions, but I do feel that, you know, identity is something that keeps changing and our experiences and, and um, all of you have such sort of different experiences, different educations, um, schoolings, et cetera, that, that, is, um, that sort of has shaped your understanding. But it's interesting that you share a lot of the same opinions. I'd like to go to some of our... Um, questions we've had a few come through and um i'm just gonna i'm gonna start off with a question from um marina does identity worry you is it a question that worries you does it matter to you guys i think that's actually quite an interesting one um Nish, do you want to do you want to try tackling that yeah i mean i think identity is important and it does like it is important to me to have an identity let's not get it like mixed up here because i think it is important however i think i've learned to embrace the different cultures that make my identity and it's been taking me so long for me to get there i'm still not 100 percent there but i am 100 percent certain of my armenian heritage in certain in like like who i am i am an armenian it doesn't matter where i'm from and that's the important thing for me. Um, but yeah. What about what about the rest of you? Um, Vahe, Hofsep, Nami, and feel free to for any of you to jump in on this or don't jump in if you don't want to answer the question. Um, so I think personally for me, um, identity is really important, um, especially because my Armenian identity has always been such a big aspect of my life. So I've always um, spoken Armenian at home. I've engaged with the Armenian culture in loads of ways throughout my life. Um, I've gone to the Armenian church in London um, throughout my life. And I think as a race who um, are small in number, as we've kind of mentioned before, it is really important for me to con continue engaging with my identity and learning more and more um, as I go along. So. For example, um, at university, I um, decided to do a dissertation on the 
genocide. And I thought before starting the dissertation, I wouldn't have, you know, a lot of research to do. And there wouldn't be many things that would pop up in books that I'd never kind of encountered. But as I went through the process, I, I saw that that wasn't the case. And there was so much that I that I learn and um, that I engage with that I hadn't previously. And I think it's really important for me to, to continue doing that. I, I, I'm hoping that your dad's not listening to you right now because I find that quite shocking considering he is the most knowledgeable Armenian person. Um, but I, I, I do feel you, and, and I'm not to plug AI right now, but actually I, there's so much that I've learned about Armenian history and culture through um, AI's events prior to joining and, and now being part of the organization. I think it's one of the few institutions that really covers the breadth of everything that, you know, that, that surrounds Armenianness. Um, so kudos um, to the team. Um, Vahe, um, do you, would you like to add anything, Hofstra, would you like to add anything to that? Um, just that, I guess, if Arme if identity wasn't important to us, then we wouldn't have a diaspora today. Just, just, just a simple note. Um, I think if identity wasn't important for us, then the generations of Armenians who survived the genocide, and even my ancestors who uh, uh, left before the, uh, part of my family who survived the genocide left and then returned to Soviet Armenia, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the if they if they'd not cared about their country or or the, or their people, then you know they wouldn't have kept their Armenianness alive. So I think, I think identity for our people is 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 an important issue. Might not be the central one, central um, aspect for every single person, but it's definitely a important factor. Yeah, I think it's definitely really important. But uh, we're uh, besides being Armenian, we're also so many other things. So I guess what's sometimes challenging and uh, interesting is to sort of looking at how those different intersections of our identities come together and sort of make peace with that and move forward with that. So uh, that I think is really important and interesting.